A surge in pneumonia among children has appeared in a second country. Mm -hmm. The Netherlands has confirmed it's tracking a sharp rise in illness after China acknowledged a big jump in cases. Tim Lester reports. Many disease specialists have been reassuring about China's new outbreak of pneumonia in children. Now, though, the outbreak is no longer confined to China. As parts of northern China struggled to cope with rising respiratory illness last week, disease experts elsewhere began to worry. A global infectious diseases watchdog cast it as an outbreak of pneumonia. It reported hospitals overwhelmed with sick children, classes on the verge of suspension and a suspicion authorities were covering up the epidemic. It Okay, so now we have to always um, separate fact from fiction here. Yes. Now, the fact of the matter is, yes, there has been a big outbreak in China. Yes, many hospitals have been overwhelmed with sick children with pneumonia, um, with some reports that it's an antibiotic-resistant pneumonia. Um, and this is a big worry. For a number of reasons, mm. okay? But I think the most worrying footage, before we get into the rest of this, probably the most worrying footage that we've seen is the following. I just want to show you. Um, of course, there's all these headlines about Chinese hospitals are hiding in how an outbreak. But this is from um, this previous week up in Hebei. Um, we've got footage again of the Dabai, as they call them, the big whites, spraying disinfectant all over classrooms and spraying disinfectant uh, all over the roads and the subway stations and that kind of nonsense. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is what happened uh, at the outbreak of COVID, okay? When COVID was ravaging China, they sent these guys out to spray presumably bleach. I'm sorry. What? As people are saying, it sounds like Winston's got it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am recovering from a cold. Yes. I'm totally okay, though. Um, I'm just in that last phase where, you know, your voice has to catch up to you the way you feel. Pneumonia. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the fact of the matter is they spray this disinfectant over everything, okay, which is a stupid knee-jerk reaction, which yeah. doesn't actually help, you know, with the viruses and so on, by just spraying around. This is, uh, well, this is bacteria. This is bacteria, so it might help to a certain degree. But at the same time... For the just, first time. Yeah, for the first time. Help. Yeah. The thing is, like, how much damage do they end up causing oh, with yeah. this crap yeah. to the environment and, like, the, whatever this bleach or whatever they're spraying into all the, the potted plants and all the roadside, you know, trees and things, they're killing off all the local wildlife and who knows what not, you know? Yeah. It's a very bad thing they're doing with this stuff. Yeah. But, okay, whether it works or not is not really what's up in the air here. The fact that they found it necessary to do COVID levels of disinfection again is a worry. OK, because if they're bringing this stuff out to spray the classrooms and spray the sidewalks, the old, the old spray parade, it means that they're very worried and trying to, you know, prevent something, mm, combat this. Combat. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the right word. So um, that's why uh, we should start to take this a little more seriously. OK, if the Chinese government is taking it seriously enough to go and drench everything in chemicals again then we should probably take it a little more seriously too. Yeah. From that point of view. Yes. All right. I'm so. going gonna, gonna to wet blanket it, but mm -hmm. not, not the China part. Sure. Um, from what I've been reading, and I poured over different uh, epidemiologists, and I, I, I referred to interviews with American doctors, mm -hmm. and people are concerned about this outbreak happening in places like Ohio, in Boston and Massachusetts and Washington, yep. D.C. Washington, D.C. So far, it looks like everything can be accounted for, as in this is not a unknown Like an unknown virus, thing, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. The thing that was scary about COVID is nobody knew what it was. Sure. If you put it under a microscope, you didn't know what it was. You're like, this is some chimera, bizarre sure. nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't, right? Yeah. This is a bacterial pneumonia. It's also RSV that's been going around. It's also a combination of it's flu season, right? Yes. We're seeing higher amount of cases. And so far, nobody's been able to link that to some sort of weird new chimera thing that came out of China, right? So that's yeah. something that I don't think your headspace should go, this is COVID. Of it's course not. not. Sure. But your headspace should go to, well, the Chinese government has had a really big issue with being transparent in the past about quite literally everything in yes. the world yes <laughs> yeah. so that's where you can put on your skeptics hat and say mm -hmm. hey 
maybe we should look at what's happening in China isolated from what's happening in the U.S. right now. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably not linked, but who knows? Maybe there's some rando thing that might might end up over here because I'll tell you yeah. why. Mm-hmm. Although we can trust the doctors in America and epidemiologists that say, hey, this is this is not unaccounted for. There are other countries that have put on travel restrictions on China uh, right now, right? Mm-hmm. And that's uh, Taiwan's included. These are not like uh, random knee-jerk countries. These are places that have good medical care systems. Taiwan's got some of the best medical care yeah, ever. Yeah, in the world. And so they made it an honest and wise decision to say, hey, maybe don't go to China right now if you are concerned because there's something going on there. And I can understand that if we were talking about England or something, right? There was a big pneumonia outbreak in England, yeah. then America and England could have transparency between each other yeah. and talk about, okay, this is not this, this is not this, this is this. But we're not, I think it's a once bitten, twice shy kind of scenario sure. where you're not going to say, I'm just going to take your word from no. the Chinese authorities anymore I mean, after what they told yeah. the WHO the first time. Yeah, exactly. The World Health Organization actually asked, we talked about this last mm-hmm. week, asked China for more transparency surrounding this outbreak which I don't think they got. Mm. And the thing is, even if China says, okay, we'll be transparent, this is what's happening, that's not transparency. That's just the Chinese medical experts telling the WHO. You need unaffiliated third parties. You need third party investigators to be able to go there unhindered to actually check up. So right now, we can never ever say for certain that it's okay, okay, coming out of China. It could be devastating. Personally, I don't think it's another COVID. Sure. Sure. Personally. Personally, yes. Yes. But it could be something bad too, because we can never prove that it isn't. And there's Mm -hmm. one other thing that I do do want to quickly talk about here, guys. And that is the idea of an antibiotic resistant. That's a separate conversation that's worth talking about. Yes. Now, this is something that we've been predicting for a long time, because having lived in China, the amount of abuse of antibiotics is off the scale. It's, (laughs) I was going to make a very oft taste joke. Okay. Yeah. But you know how, like, the U.S. has that whole drug epidemic? Yes. China's like that, except but they with don't antibiotics. get high. Yeah, <laughs> just, they just take they antibiotics. They just get disinfected from the inside. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> when you go to the, the doctor in China, um, and remember, I trained doctors for many years. That was my main job. Mm-hmm. I worked for a medical training company, so I would go and teach the doctors English and and hospital etiquette and rules because they used to go study abroad. So I worked with a lot of doctors and I worked in a lot of clinics and a lot of hospitals, okay? And around um, not only Shenzhen, but other parts of the country. Now, one thing that happens in China, which is ridiculous, is that if somebody comes in with a very minor complaint, even just cold or flu-like symptoms, they get given a course of antibiotics. It happened, you broke your knee and they gave you a course of antibiotics. Yeah, without any wound. Yeah. Yeah. You just, oh, my knee's broken. Here's antibiotics. Yeah, well, and that was the only thing I was given, by the way. Yeah. When, <laughs> I had to go buy my own crutches and knee brace, by yeah. the way. I had to go next door and purchase them myself. Yeah, that's how it works. When I was... Uh, Cap- that's do- capitalism. Yeah, when I was doing a test run, there was a big <laughs> event in Shenzhen, uh, like a big a sports event called the Universiate. It's like the Olympics for universities. Yeah. <clears throat> they set up a very high-tech, modern clinic. I've told this story before, but this is very, very important for yeah. context. Now, I was training them, okay, all the doctors in the city on how to deal with foreigners when they come there. Yeah. Okay, it's part of my job. So part of my job was to run a role play. I went to this new high-tech clinic they set up in the athlete's village Mm -hmm. and it was very decked out. Most modern x-ray machine, they sat me on that thing and they like moved me. It's like a robot. It moves you around. It's crazy. But the whole thing is I would have to think up in my mind uh, an ailment that I have and see if they can deal with me. I'm not allowed to speak Chinese to them, only English, and see if they could deal with me. So I came up with this idea that I'd sprained my ankle, okay? Very simple. So I kind of hobble in there. They put me in a wheelchair. There's actually a newspaper article of me doing this test somewhere. They put me in the wheelchair. They, you know, take me to the front desk. They're, they didn't have any proper skills to deal with me in English, by the way, but that's besides the point. I tell them, you know, this hurts, my leg hurts, my foot hurts, all that kind of thing. They took me to the x-ray department, put me on that fancy x-ray machine, took me to a consulting doctor. He um, tried in some very broken English to like figure out what was going on. And then he prescribed me an antibiotic. Not only did he prescribe me an antibiotic, he prescribed me one that I'm allergic to. 
Now that is our time. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to say that's the state yes. of that whole setup. Luckily for them during the event, the only thing yes. that happened is one athlete got heat stroke. That was the only bad thing. Did they give him antibiotics? Probably. The, God forbid something bad actually <laughs> happened. Like, I just want some cold water. They're like, they give him hot water and antibiotics. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is they, they prescribed me antibiotics for a sprained ankle. Okay. Antibiotics is used as a cure-all. It's yeah. seen as yeah. a magic. Like a panacea. Yeah. It's seen as a magic like snake oil. Like you just, oh, you've got a problem, take antibiotics. Yeah. And everyone in China takes way too much antibiotics. Yeah. And so the, the danger with this is, of course, is um, some kind of a, a virus or a bug that manages to overcome antibiotics. Yeah. You know, we've been calling this for, yeah. for 10 years because if you keep treating random little things mm. with antibiotics, it's too much of it and the bugs adapt, you know, and that's how it works. And we could be facing at some point in the near future because of the huge population of China and the huge amount of like antibiotic abuse that happens there. We could face a situation where something bad and nasty like pneumonia comes along that is immune to antibiotics yeah i think uh, the best logic to understand this because you might say that's that's ridiculous all they have to do is stop right but you have to understand that when people think and i think this this boils down to the way leadership and politics even treat china wrong mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if you look at china you often hear that it's some foresight it's got infinite foresight it's always thinking about the future it's mm. 10 steps ahead sure. of the u.s <laughs> Stupid countries like the U.S. only care about the election cycle, so everything resets. There's no actual progress. Whereas China, they are. Oh, oh they, yeah, they always got they a plan. They may be, mm. they may be authoritarian. They, you may even disagree with everything they do. Yeah, but dang, they got it sorted out, and they've already figured everything out, right? Yeah. And that is, it, it, until you go to China, you just you might believe that until you go there and you say, this has got to be. The most knee-jerk place yeah. I've ever been Hap in my entire life. chaotic. It's chaos. They, mm. There's nothing figured out, right? No. The only thing figured out is grand government projects like things like high-speed rails and bridges, which often fail. Yeah. Now, you put that in the context of antibiotic-resistant drugs, mm. and it all makes sense because you're not going to get people to stop taking antibiotics as a panacea for everything because that's the quickest solution. It is the quickest solution. And that's how China deals with everything. I think that's the yeah. greatest analogy you could say is China is just... The way China operates politically is basically taking antibiotics every yeah. day. <laughs> and it's ridiculous to the point where patients will demand, even if there's nothing wrong with them, they're like, well, just give me a give course me anyway. of antibiotics they'll, anyway. They'll, I'll one-up you, mm -hmm. and you'll agree with me on this. Mm -hmm. they, won't even, they won't even ask for it. They'll go buy it themselves. Yes. They'll find, they'll make connections so that they no, always have antibiotics you, at home. You can buy antibiotics over the counter yes. in China. Yes. So, you know, you just yeah. go buy it. Yeah. It's no big deal. A uh, doctor said it's okay. Yeah, but you could just go to the clinic yeah. downstairs and buy yeah. it. You know, the thing is, um, I would like to put this out as a general warning that there's a huge chance that at some point, one of these years, we're going to see an antibiotic-resistant uh, an outbreak come out of China, a that's, super bug. That's not outlandish at all to predict yeah. that because many scientists around the world would agree with you, including Chinese scientists yeah. have warned against that. Yeah. But science often just gets bookshelved in <clears throat> China. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, when I see this kind of thing happening, and I've heard, I've heard associated to this outbreak, uh, antibiotic resistant pneumonia. I've heard that mentioned. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's what it is. No, no. But that's why I would like to pay extra close attention sure. to this. And I would like to, just as um, kind of a public service announcement for everyone out there, we've had a discussion about this whole outbreak in China. We both agree that it's most probably not serious. Yeah. Okay. But to say something is probably something leaves room for error and leaves room for doubt. Okay. And because of that... I would suggest that everybody, as usual, just like before COVID, when we were telling everyone, make sure that you have a couple of tins of baked beans stashed yeah, we, in the we cupboard. we never told anyone to freak out, but no. we said make sure you have stuff just in case there's yeah. a lockdown at some yeah. point. I'm, I'm just saying, just make sure that, as always, you at least have a slight amount of preparation, yeah. because we never know what's going to happen You never next. know, right? This could it's be, a good thing to yes, do anyway. This could just be a seasonal thing. Yeah. This could be, uh, what was that called, immune debt? Yes, immune debt. Is, it's actually a really interesting phrase. It's yeah. the idea that if you've been locked down for a long time, like China was, yeah, your immune system hasn't been able to keep up. You got to pay back, yeah. right? You got to pay the piper, pay the piper, my friend, yeah. right? Because you're yeah. not out there mingling, interacting. You're not even shopping mm -hmm. in grocery stores, right? You've been locked down. You've mm -hmm. been stuck in these dumb lines where you're getting tested all the time, right? This lockdown was nuts, right? Yeah. yeah. 
<clears throat> now you got to pay up, right? Yeah. The diseases and the, the viruses and the bacteria, they're all like, well, I just found a new playground that is completely untouched. There's yeah, exactly. no one playing here. Yeah. And they can populate that playground. Exactly. So um, while I wouldn't suggest panicking and worrying about this no, at the same I time, I also think that it's good to at least be prepared. Yes. In a, in a small way. I, I think that's a good Get some practice. rice aroni. Yeah, I think that's a good practice, period. Yeah. Period. Just get some kind of stuff that can last a year yeah. or so, chuck it in your cupboard. It's just always good to have that anyway. Yeah. Right? A couple of bottles of water or something like that. Yeah. You never know. Just in case. Just in case. But we, yeah. You never know. You never <clears throat> so know. I think that's the be all and the end all of this particular thing. We just have to keep an eye on it. And we will, of course, on the show here, if we notice anything or get any news. I have been speaking to my friends in China who are doctors. Mm -hmm. And they have confirmed that there's been a huge increase. Yes, yes I will acknowledge that. Yeah, in uh, specifically children mm -hmm. getting pneumonia. Um, they've uh, they've confirmed this, but at the same time, they also are telling me that this is uh, not like, like super out of the ordinary. Yeah, I think I think the most important thing to end with here is, mm -hmm. yes, be prepared. Yes, yeah. we can never really trust what's going on. Yes. But the difference in reaction of the people we've spoken to this time versus last time is wildly different. Mm -hmm. You know how China last time was like, it's fine, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's just the, the flu. The people we talked to didn't say that. No, no, no. <laughs> the people we talked to, the doctors and everything, they were like, no, this is not fine. No. Right? Yeah. This time, they're like, it's probably fine. Yeah. That's a little different. A lot anyway, different. We'll uh, keep you up to date on that. Yeah. There they go. There they go. It's like a herding cattle or something. There is a trend right now. In China, called the Dozer Challenge. No. Yeah. It's slide whistle. <laughs> the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> yeah, it gives me the shudder. Yeah, let's try it out. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah.